This is a walkthrough and a demonstration of Doctopus, which is one of the Google Apps scripts that was created by our scripting savior, Andrew Stillman. If you want to find out more about this script or others, you can take a look at upd.org and find out all kinds of information. But back to Doctopus. This uh, script is uh, added into a Google uh, spreadsheet, and you can use it to distribute, share, and manage documents with students. So for example, you're doing a project and you have a template that you want, to, you want all of them to use. You can share that out with them and do a whole lot of other things that you can't do with just the basic template feature within Google Apps or within Drive. So I'm give you, going to give you an example here of a video project that I want to do with my students. So I've got one spread, you create one spreadsheet per project. So you might want to keep a master spreadsheet at first and then just create copies of it each time you want to run the Doctopus script. So the script is run from the spreadsheet and I've got here my sheet with my students' names on it. After you install the script or insert it into the spreadsheet, you get this menu and you launch the installation of it just like you would any other script. It takes you through a couple of things, you just have to in the Doctopus menu, when you launch the installation, it's going to ask you a few things. There are different types of sharing that you can do. You can do group projects, so you could have a couple of students working together, and you can predefine that and actually share the same document out with members of that group so they're collaborating together. You could do an individual one with each student receiving the exact same template and working individually, or you could differentiate have uh, a couple of kids have a form A, a different kid have form B, but they're all individual, uh, individual projects. Or you could have the whole class working on a project. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple and have all the kids get the same. Here it gives you a little bit of a description, and what's also interesting is it gives you an option to give other kids in the class either view or comment privileges to everybody else's documents or give them no access at all. You have an op opportunity here to add email addresses of other teachers that you may want to give editing rights and that sort of thing. And then there's the basic settings here. The sheet that contains your roster, in my case I have sheet 1, so you can see here I have the student name, I have student email addresses in the student email field, and the flag column you use if you are doing uh, groups and that sort of thing. You also have the option to put copy these documents into particular individual student folders, but I'm not going to do that on this in this case. Now we watch our little octopus here wiggle, or our octopus wiggle. So in step two here we have a couple of selections that we have to make. One is to select the folder that contains our document template. I've already set this up, so I've got a video project demo folder, and that's where I've saved my template. Okay, I'll just show it to you here real quickly. I've got my video planner, and I've got my Doctopus spreadsheet that I'm working on, and I've got a little rubric here that's a little bit of magic I'm going to do in another demo. Here I have the option, it's taking a look inside that folder, and it says, all right, what one do you want to copy and share out? In this case, I want to use my document. You can tell what type of Google uh, Doc it is, whether it's a spreadsheet, you could do this with presentations, documents, and those types of things. So I have a video planner I want to share out to my kids. All right, step three. We choose a destination folder here. Now, this is a folder within the teacher's drive that so they can group all of, keep all of the, the student projects together. Again, I've already created one, and I've called it a video student projects folder. If you had to, haven't created one, you can give it a name, any name that you want. You click Create Folder Name, and then it will appear in your list, and you can select it. So here, how I want the files to be named, I'm going to call it Video Project and we have some variables here that come from, right from your spreadsheet. So I'm going to copy those because I don't want to mess them up. Paste it in there. So everyone's going to be named Video Project with a student name. I like to do this option where I notify the editors immediately when I share it with them and they get an email. So here's the email address variable. It's coming from my spreadsheet. You can give it whatever subject you want and you can say please click here and add the project template to your my drive. That would oops if I can spell my name right. Save those settings. We'll watch our Doctopus wiggle some more. Alright, so step four is now here here's when you're gonna actually send them out. You don't have to do this right now, but you might uh, if it's all ready to go you can run and share it. All right, I get a little confirmation. Everything was shared out successfully, and click OK. 
So it's given us some added information here. These are the links to each student project individually shared with each student. It keeps track of when each document was last edited, which is kind of handy if you just want to keep track on what the kids are doing. And it also gives a place here for you to, for privately, to give a grade and written feedback that you can actually send back to kids a little bit later. Our Doctopus menu has also changed. You see, now I can go back and revisit any of these steps if I want to make any changes or do uh, make any edits to those. And it's got some other information down here below, which I'll show you in a little bit. To show you what this looks like for students, I'm going to flip over to my student account here, and I'm going to go and check her email. Do a little refresh here. Now you can see she's got an email that says, "I've shared a doc. I've shared you on a document." She opens up the email, and she's got a link directly to her project. Okay. I like to do this email because send them this email because it gives them a link directly to it and it's really important for them to organize or to save it in the proper folder so that they can keep it uh, keep everything organized. You'll notice here it's given her the, the correct name, it's added Jenny's name to it and what, what the reason I like to give them the email is that by default it doesn't actually go, the, the shared document does not go into their My Drive. It's in the shared with me area. So you can see here video project Jenny is the one that I just added. So that's why I like to send them the email is because it takes them directly to it. Then they can use the folders icon here to move it into the folder that they would like. So now Jenny's done some work on her project and she's got some information. She's doing a video project on how to use Doctopus. If we go back to the teacher spreadsheet, we can now see that this last edited column has changed. If you want, there's actually a script here to refresh the last time of edit. You give it a few seconds to run through and it will update that time. So now uh, a great feature here within Doctopus is the ability to embargo the student work so you can grade it. So for example, you have a due date, you want to do a, a grading check on it at a particular time. You run the embargo script and it actually changes the permissions on each of those documents from allowing the students to be able to edit it to just be able to view. After the script is run, you get a little confirmation and now you notice that the last edited column has been changed. If we go back to Jenny's page or Jenny's project, I'm logged in as Jenny right now, it says, hey, you can't get at this any longer. I reload it, and if I try to edit it, I can't. You can see here that it says that she has view only access. So as a teacher, you can go through, and if I look at Jenny's project in the teacher window here, I can open it up now. and I can grade it if I want. I have editing rights. I could insert comments and I could say be more specific. Add those comments there. Of course, since this is Google Docs, those are immediately, I'm logged in as Jenny, uh, these are immediately shown up in hers, so, but she can't make any changes. So let's say you finished all your, uh, your commenting and grading, but you want to give them a chance to continue on. The Doctopus script also allows you to unembargo so that the kids can go back and edit. This basically undoes what it just did in the embargo process, and it's going to change every, all the kids back to editing rights. Very cool feature. That's it for the basics of Doctopus. Remember, it's a script that runs from a spreadsheet. It allows you to distribute uh, template files to students, whether they're working individually in groups with various options. Um, and control them quite easily. Remember, you can embargo them so students no longer have edit rights, and you can unembargo them to give them a chance to make revisions on their on their work. If you have any questions about Doctopus or other Google Apps scripts, I'm happy to try and help you out. Um, but you can also check out uh, upd.org, and they have a ton of scripts there that are available for you to use within an educational setting. Happy scripting!